All right, so this is unit three, complex numbers. We're going to start out with simplifying square roots of negative numbers. So we have, so let's start out with, I have split it up into negative 1 times 169. And we break it down, the square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 169 breaks down into 13 and 13. And so that is a perfect square. So it's just end up going to be 13. And so our final answer is 13i. Next one, we have negative, let's do a square root, negative 1 times 216. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 216, I don't know, but we can break it down. It's divided by 2. We can divide it by 2 again. I'm going to keep going by 2 until it's a small enough number. Now I can divide by 3. And another three. Uh, so now we're looking for it's a square root, so we're looking for pairs. And the reason why you're looking for pairs is each pair, when you multiply them together, like two times two is four, and a square root of four is two. So we have another, we have threes here that we can circle. So that's going to come out as a three, and left over mm -hmm. is a two and a three, so we're going to multiply that underneath. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, and let's not forget about that i. So 6i squared to 6 is your answer. Number 3. I'm going to break it down. 6 is on the outside. It's always multiplication there. So we're looking at 6 times whatever comes out of the square root simplifies out. will be multiplied times 6. Squared to negative 1 is i. 180, I don't know. So times 2, 90 is 30 times, ooh, changed it up on myself, divided by 3. doesn't matter how you divide which two numbers, you'll always get the same prime numbers in the end. So 180, we have, what do we have, two pairs, we have twos. So it's going to be 6 times 2 and a 3. So 6 was from the outside here. And then what was left over looks like just a 5. And don't forget the i, like I kind of almost did there again. 6 times 2 is 12, times 3 is 36. So 36i square root of 5 is your final answer. All right, number 4, starting to get fun. We're getting variables. We have... I'm going to write it down below here so it kind of have more room. 5 times the square root of negative 1 times 128 times x times y to the 4th times z to the 4th. Looks a lot harder than it's really going to be, I think. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 128, did we do that already? No. 128 is 64 and 2. 64, you, you can break it down to 8 times 8. You can break it down further, but you can also see that these are pairs. Anytime you have pairs, you can just stop there. So that's going to end up being 8 that's going to come out. The x is x. There's no pairs there. The y to the fourth, There's you can break it down into four y's multiplied together. So you have two pairs there. So this is going to be 8 squared root of 2. This is going to be y squared. Z to the fourth is going to be the exact same thing. One, two, three, four z's multiplied together, so you're going to have two pairs. z times z is z squared. And let's get this all together here. So we have 5 times 8. 5 times 8 is 40. And we have y squared, z squared. Let's not forget that i. And what's left underneath the square root? Got to be careful here. We have square root of 2, and x is left over. And that should be your final answer. Number 5. So this is 2 times x times negative 1 times 5, 12, x to the third, y to the second. So square root of negative 1 is i. 512, I don't know. Is that 256 and 2? 
256 is 128 and 2. 128 is 64 and 2. 64 is, I'm just going to do like I did last one, 8 and 8. So we have a pair of 8s is going to come out. And so that'll be 8. A pair of 2s is going to come out times 2. And there'll be a 2 left over that will stay underneath the square root. So that's there. We have x to the third is x times x times x. There's one pair of x's, so that's going to come out x, and the x is going to be left over underneath the square root. The y squared is y times y, so that's going to just be y that's going to come out. So we have 2 times 8, so the 2 is here. 8 times 2 times x from beginning times x times y and the i and then what's left out over underneath the square root we have a 2 and an x so let's let's figure out what we have here 2 times 8 times 2 is 32 x times x is x squared y i square root of 2x that should be your final answer for number five. Number six. Six times a times b squared times square root. Let's break that negative 64 up and negative 1 times 64 times a to the squared times b squared or cubed. Square root of negative 1 is i squared of 64. That's 8. Square root of a squared is a times a, so there's a. B to the third, if you're struggling with that one, you can write it off to the side. You have a B, and then there's a B left over, so that stays underneath the square root. All right, let's multiply these together. We have 8 times 6 is 48. A times A is A squared. B squared times B is B to the third. The exponent just tells you how many Bs are multiplied together. And we have an I square root of just the lonely b wild answer but the, what's underneath the square root is a smaller number so that is your final answer all right now on to i to the powers so we always think in terms of i squareds how many i squareds can you divide out of 30 well that's 15. remember that i squared is always equal to negative one so now the next step is replacing the i squared with negative one so all I did was I replaced it I squared with negative 1, and negative 1 to the 15th power, you can put it in parentheses and put it in a calculator, or you could think it's to the odd exponent, so it's going to be a negative answer, negative 1. Number 10, how many I squareds can you divide out of 175? 175 divided by 2. That is 87. 87. 87 times 2 is 174. We need 175. So what you're going to end up doing is you multiply by one more i, so that'll be one more i that's multiplied, which adds one to the exponent. So now we have i squared is negative 1, negative 1 to the 87th times i. All I do in my second step. Negative 1 to the 87th, that's an odd exponent, so that's going to end up being negative 1 times i, negative I. There's your final answer. I to the 48th, we have I squared to the divided by 2, that's 24. That's 2 times 24 is 48, so we got them all. I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 24th, that's an even exponent, so that will become a positive 1. I to the 169. 169 is 80. Four. 84. That's 168, though. But we need 169, so we multiply by one more. Oh. And I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 84th, so that's an even exponent, so it's going to be a positive 1. Positive 1 times I just ends up being I. Uh, now, negative exponents. Don't be... Alarmed by these. 
i to the negative 6 is equivalent to 1 over i to the positive 6. So negative exponent, the base, you're going to move it down to the denominator. Well, let's work it out in the denominator. How many i squared is going to divide out of 6? 3. i squared is negative 1 to the third. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. There's your final answer. I to the negative 8. So put it, we want to make it a positive exponent, so we're going to leave 1 over i to the positive 8. 1 over i squared to the 4th, because 8 divided by 2 is 4. Let's replace the i squared with negative 1 to the 4th. That's positive 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. All right, 15. Let's not be confused by this. This is not a negative exponent, it's just negative 1. So we're going to treat it as like a negative 1. And the i to the 24th is still i squared. How many can you divide out of? 24 is 12. Negative 1, negative 1 to the 12th. Negative 1 to the 12th power is positive 1. So I... I and just so you know, this negative 1, that's what's on the outside every single time. That's, it was just carried over, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. That's our final answer. 16 is the same thing. I would just treat that as a negative 1 on the outside. So it's negative 1 times i squared. How many i squared can you divide out of, 60, divide out of 67? And that's 33. But that's 2 times 33 is 66. We need one more i, so we multiply by one more i. To get 67. So the negative one's on the outside, changing the i squared to negative one. And negative one then to the 33rd is negative one. So we have negative one times negative one times i. So just to keep it clear, this negative one on the outside is here. That's all the same negative one. And the i squared got converted to the i to the negative one. A negative 1 to the 33rd is negative 1, and the other i is just hanging out there. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times i is positive i. All right, moving on to adding and subtracting. So why are there parentheses? That's what I would focus on first. Why are these parentheses here? No real reason. There's no multiplication, no subtraction, no exponents. So there's no real reason for those at, at parentheses, so we can drop those. So 4 minus 6i. Why are the second set of parentheses here? Well, they're here because of that 2. So we're going to distribute that 2 in, positive 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Why do I have parentheses around these? Hopefully you're saying, Mr. Johnson, why do you have parentheses around those? You just said you can drop them. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times a negative 3i is a negative 6i. All right, let's get some like terms together. Let's start with the real numbers. 4 plus 4 is 8. Negative 6i minus 6i is a negative 12i. Be careful with that. Always bring the sign to the left with it. All right, subtract 8 minus 3i from negative 5. So negative 5, and we're subtracting 8. 8 minus 3i. All right. So I put it in parentheses. It's a binomial. And I need, so I'm subtracting all of it. We have, we're going to distribute this negative in. You're subtracting both terms. And then you can drop the parentheses. So subtracting positive 8 is a negative 8. Subtracting negative 3 is a positive 3i. Let's get our like terms together. There's only 2, so it's negative 13 plus 3i. All right, fill in the blanks with real and imaginary numbers. So we have what number, so let me write this on the side, what number minus 14 will give you negative 10? So you can write that on the side if you want. And that's just a quick... One step equation. So that's got to be 4. 4 minus 14 gives you negative 10. Perfect. Let's do this with this next one. We have 3i minus 
blank i xi equals negative 2i. Hmm. We have minus 3i minus 3i. You get negative xi equals negative 5i. And if we divide by a negative i, I guess I didn't need the i there. This will become a positive 5. So this should be a 5. Let's see if it works. 3i minus 5i will give you negative 2i. Perfect. So we needed a 4 there and a 5. You can also guess and check on those. So next one, 7i times negative 3i is a negative 21i squared. i squared is neg equals negative 1. Negative 1 times 20, negative 21 is a positive 21. Next, we have negative 2i times 2 is negative 4i. Negative 2i times a positive 6i is a negative 12i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 12 is a positive 12. You can write it that way, or you can write it with the real number first. Either way, I'm fine with either answer. All right, number 23. Find the product, product means multiply, of 4i and its conjugate. What's the conjugate of 4 minus i? 4 plus i. So we need a product of these. So 4 minus i times 4 plus i. You can do this with a Punnett square if you'd like. Let's do it. I've showed that in class probably the most, so why not 4 minus i, 4 plus i. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative i is a negative 4i. 4 times i is positive 4i. i times negative i is a negative i squared. All right, let's look at our like terms. 4i minus 4i, what happens with those? They're opposites of each other. They will simplify. We have i squared. I squared equals negative 1. Be careful. It's a negative I squared, so it, or you can think of it as opposite of negative 1, and that's going to be positive 1. Or you could think of it as negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then we have like terms here, 1 and 16. Those need to be added together. They're like terms. They're, that's a positive 1, so it'll be 17. That's actually your final answer, 17. 24, so square means times itself. So 6 minus 8i times 6 minus 8i. You can just put a square again, or you can multiply it out. I'll just multiply this one out so you guys can see both ways. This is double distribution. 6 times negative 8 is negative 48i. Negative 8i times 6 is a negative 40, another negative 48i. Negative 8 times i times negative 8i is a positive 64i squared. Look to simplify negative 48i minus 48i and the i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times positive 64 is a negative 64. So we have, I'm just going to look at these, negative 64 and 36 because those are real numbers. I'm going to work out those first. That would be 28 negative 28. So negative 28 and then negative 48i minus 48i is a negative 96i's. When you're adding or subtracting, you're just counting how many there are. So there's negative 96i's total. 25. Multiply it out. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times negative 5i is a negative 10i. 5i times 2 is a positive 10i. You see those are conjugates, so they will, those middle terms should it's always simplify to zero. And 5i times a negative 5i is negative 25i squared. Middle terms, see those? will simplify. They're opposites. We also have then i squared is negative 1. Negative 25 times negative 1 is a positive 25. You have 4 plus 25 is 29. Sweet. 
All right, 26. All right, we have a subtraction here and we have multiplication. Multiplication comes first in order of operations, so we need to multiply these out first. I'll go back to the Punnett square. No reason, just want you to see both ways. So 6 minus 2i, 3 minus 4i. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6i. Negative 4i times 6 is negative 24i. Negative 4i times a negative 2i is 8i squared. Let's get our like terms together. So we have there, the i's, we have i squared is negative 1. We have positive 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. So let's get these together. We have 18 minus 8 is 10. Negative 24i minus 6i is a negative 30i. Then we have this subtraction here. That subtraction, we're going to distribute in. You're subtracting both terms. That's what it, that's saying. So you're subtracting 5 and you're subtracting 3i. So you have 10 minus 5 is 5. 30i, negative 30i minus 3i is a negative 33i. And that's your final answer. All right. On the back, looking at the denominator, is it a monomial or a binomial? Monomial. Monomial multiplied by i, divided by i. That is equivalent to 1. So we're not changing the value of the problem, just modifying it so then the i is not in the denominator as a final answer. So we do 7 times i, so multiply across the numerator. Multiply across the denominator, negative 3i times i is negative 3i squared. Simplify the denominator. It's the only thing you can simplify. It's negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Look at your coefficients, 7 over 3. Can you simplify anything there fraction-wise? Nope. That's your final answer. Number 30. Looking at your denominator, monomial. So we multiply by i over i again. Multiply the numerator. So I'm going to have that negative. Don't forget that negative out there. Negative 3 over 9i times i is i squared. In the denominator, we have i squared is negative 1. So we have negative 3i over 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. We have these two negatives here. So that's a negative divided by negative is a positive, so that, those will simplify out. 3 ninths, that can simplify down. Divide the numerator by 3, divide the denominator by 3. 1 times i is 1i, or just i, over 3. 31. Look at the denominator, 8i. It's a monomial, so we multiply by i over i. The numerator is a binomial, so let's multiply it in. I put parentheses around the binomials always. i times 3i is... 3i squared. 8i times i is 8i squared. We have 3i, that doesn't simplify, but we have i squared, which is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. i squared in the denominator is negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. I know some of you really want to simplify here the i squareds. If this i here in the first term was i squared, then you could. All three terms have to have the exact same coefficient or, not coefficient, but the uh, variable or the imaginaries to be able to simplify um, properly. Then at the very end, you look at three, so looking at your coefficients of each term and determine whether you can simplify three, three, and eight. They're not all divisible by the same number, so that is going to be your final answer. If you'd like to move the negative up to the numerator, you would actually end up with it. You're switching the signs of each term in the numerator, and you would end up with this. And number 32 is messed up, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Number 30. How did I go from 32 to... So 33... Not to be intimidated by this. This is the original problem. So here it is again. And we're multiplying by what to get. What's, what do we have to do to simplify it? 
denominator is a binomial, so we multiply by the conjugate. So 6 plus 5i, that would, that's what would go in the boxes. Then to simplify, you have, we have the 27, that's from negative 12, and when the i squared simplifies down, that would become positive 15. Well, that's not even right. That should be, that actually should be 3. And looks like 10i minus 18i is a negative 8i, so minus 8i. In the denominator, we have 30i minus 30i. Those will simplify, and you have, this will end up being positive 25, so 36 plus 25 is 61. And that'll be your final answer. So we're looking for 6 plus, uh, six plus 5i. Change that to a 3, 8i over 61. All right, skip some numbers. Looking at your denominator, it's a binomial, so we multiply by the conjugate. 3 plus 2i, 3 plus 2i. All binomials. Put them in parentheses. The numerator, if you want to put the punnett square with the numerator, you have 6 minus 9i. 6 minus 9i, and 3 plus 2i, 3 plus 2i. Multiply that out, 18, negative 27i, 12i, and negative 18i squared. Simplifying, we have like terms, boom, and i squared, we got to simplify. i squared is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 18 is positive 18. So we have... Positive 18 plus 18 is 36. So this is our numerator, it's 36. And then negative 27i plus 12i is a negative 15i. So that's your numerator. The denominator, we can put do the Punnett square there too. We have 3 minus 2i and 3 plus 2i. They are conjugates, so this should work out nicely. We have opposites here. Those will simplify out. And i squared is negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. So our denominator ends up being 13. So now you look at 36. 15 and 13, are all of those divisible by anything? Nope, that's your final answer. And finally, number 38. It is a binomial denominator, two terms. So we need to multiply by the conjugate again. The conjugate just means, just change the sign of the imaginary. So not the negative 2, just the minus 6i. So let's multiply this out. I've got all kinds of binomials, just like the last one. Um, let's do it with Punnett square. Seems to be fan favorite, so let's do it. Negative 3 plus i, negative 2 plus 6i. 6, negative 2i, negative 18i, and 6i squared. Like terms, i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Oh my goodness, we have 6 minus 6. That's those go away. And then we have negative 18 minus 2i is negative 20i. So that's your numerator. Kind of weird that it cancels or simplifies down that far, but it is what it is. Uh, working out the denominator. Negative 2 plus 6i. So it's 4, 12i, negative 12i, and negative 36i squared. Those simplify down to 0i or 0. i squared is negative 1. Negative 36 times negative 1 is positive 36. So 36 plus 4 is 40. Oh, my goodness. This is going to work out nicely. We look at the coefficients. Can we simplify those? Sure can. 20 over 40 simplifies down to divide both by 20. Whoa, that's a big number. And we get negative 
i over 2, and 1 times i is i, so we end up with a negative i over 2 as your final answer. All right, hopefully this... Uh, are those the same? Those are the same. Hopefully this helped you, and you